Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Light It Up Church. Welcome. 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 Oh, man, we are so glad that you are here. We're going to allow y'all just to come in just a little bit, just a little bit. Come on in. Come on in. I want you to let everybody know <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. He's wanting to speak to us. How many of y'all believe that today? How many of y'all, do you believe that, Courtney? I'm telling you, I am so excited. Welcome to Light It Up Church, where we want you to know the light. We want you to be the light, and we want you to go and spread the light. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and let people know that the Holy Spirit is here, and he is wanting to speak to you. I am super excited. I have my lovely wife, Courtney. Alexander here. She is here to join me and she is going to deliver an awesome word by the Holy Spirit. Come on. So I'm so excited, y'all. Are y'all excited? You know, let's just get the vernacular out the way. We're, we want to thank each and every one of you for sharing out, letting the world, world know that God is about to speak. Don't you believe that, Courtney? Amen. God is about to speak. I'm telling you, I am super excited. Let's go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all know what we do here at Light It Up Church. Let's just invite the Holy Spirit in this place. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, we lay out a seat for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you, Holy Spirit. We, we adore you. We adore your presence. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you are doing something awesome on behalf of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you, God, that you are doing something awesome. You are revealing. I thank you, Father God, that you're reassuring establishing a prayer life, a fortified prayer life in your people. And I thank you, Father God. We bind every spirit of distraction in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit of infirmity right now in the name of Jesus, every spirit of infraction, uh, a distraction right now for, that'll try to hinder the word from coming forth. And we thank you and we consider it done. In Jesus name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready for the word? Yeah, are y'all ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Amen. I'm telling you, I am so ready. Courtney and I, we are ready for the word. We are ready. Let's go ahead and grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your own way, just say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for this word. Oh, I've been waiting for this word. I've been hungering for this word. Your word is powerful. Your word is going to prick the hearts of your people. Your word is going to do something mighty. Your word is going to reveal itself, uh, uh, reveal who you are to us in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we've been waiting for your word. We stand on your word. Your word is the only thing that is yea and amen. Your word is the only thing that 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 is a strong foundation. Every other foundation is, is sinking in the name of Jesus. We stand on your word. Your word has never returned to us null and boy in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. I just want to introduce to each and every one of you my lovely wife, Courtney amen. Alexander. I am so excited. I'm, I bet you if you're on this live or watching a replay, you're actually very surprised that she is here with us. Amen. And I'm telling y'all, she is going to speak. We're going to just bounce back and forth. And, and God is going to do something awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. So I hope your hearts and minds are ready to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about prayer, right, Courtney? We've been talking about prayer. We've been talking about what it means to establish a, a prayer life. We've been talking about what it means to establish a prayer life. How many of y'all know and understand 
that as a Christian, we must have a fortified prayer life. Amen. We must have an established prayer life. We must know and understand. Guess what? We must know and understand that when we have an established prayer life, we are actually practicing the presence of God. Amen. We're practicing the presence of God. It's more than just a ritualistic notion. It's more than just ritual, ritualistic sayings or anything like that. No, when we effectively pray, as a son and as a daughter of God, guess what? We are practicing the presence of God. Amen. And I'm so glad that we're here week four in when it comes to establishing a prayer life, what it means to have a strong prayer life. Amen. And guess what? The Holy Spirit laid it on my wife that she's going to teach us and we're just going to go back and forth. Uh, uh, this is what the Holy Spirit laid on my wife and I. Push to pray even when you can't see your way. I want somebody to type that in the comments right now. Push to pray even when you can't see your way. Amen. Come on, Courtney, say that again real quick. Just say what I just said, Courtney. I'm just getting excited. I need to settle down real quick. What is it? Push Go ahead. Push to pray. That's it. Even when you can't see your way. That's it. Come on, when things get hard, Come on, part of having an established prayer life, we must continue to push to pray, even we, when we can't see your way. Yeah, amen. And I want y'all to turn with us to Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 42. Amen. I'm going to read this passage of scripture, and then Courtney's just going to let it rip. And we, we, you know, we're just going to let God do what he does best. Amen. Turn with us to Mark chapter 5. Verses 21 through 42. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 42. And this is a very familiar passage of scripture. You have two incidences that are taking place. Amen. You've got the man by the name of Jairus and his daughter. Amen. Um, and uh, you also you have the woman who was touched by Jesus. The woman who had the issue of blood. And there are two situations going on where two different people had to push in order to get their miracle. Amen. Well, you sometimes you got to push in order to get your miracle. Sometimes you got to push, excuse me, in order to pray. So Mark chapter five, verses 21 through 42. Let's go ahead and read. It says here, when Jesus had crossed again by the boat, to the other side many people gathered to him and he was beside the sea verse 22 one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jairus caught saw Jesus and came and fell at his feet and earnestly asked him my little daughter is lying at the point of death I ask you come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and she will live, verse 24. So Jesus went with him. Notice, we're painting a picture here. And many people followed him and pressed in on him. Notice what the word of the Lord says. Many people followed him and pressed in on him. Verse 25. And a certain woman had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had suffered much under many uh, physicians. She had spent all she had and was not better, but rather grew worse. Notice what, what the word of God is saying. She's with these doctors. She had this issue of blood, even though she spent all this, all this money, her situation did not get better. It actually got worse. Verse 27, when she had heard Jesus, heard of Jesus, amen. She came to the crowd behind. She came in the crowd behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his garments, I shall be healed. Amen. If I may touch his garments, I shall be healed. And immediately her hemorrhage dried up and she felt in, um, she felt in her body that she was healed from the affliction. Verse 30. At once, Jesus knew within himself that power had gone out of him. And he turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? Verse 31. 
His disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing against you and you say, who touched me? Verse 32. And he looked around to see who had, who had done it. Verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell before him and told him the entire truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the house of the synagogue ruler, which was Jairus, and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Because remember, Jairus was going to Jesus because he knew what Jesus can do. But then now the report of his daughter got worse. So here we are. We have people that live in his house said, your daughter is dead. No need to talk to Jesus anymore. Verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. All right, so the first point, um, in order to push to pray, even though you can't see your way, you want to make sure you invite Jesus into your situation. Yes. You don't want to do it alone uh, or, or by yourself. And uh, as we go back into the scripture where mm -hmm. it said um, that Jairus saw Jesus, verse 22, and came and fell at his feet. Um, basically, he's he's inviting Jesus to come in. To he's expecting Jesus to come and to heal his daughter. Yes. Um, his daughter is at one state in one condition, um, and in this particular state, he still sees a possibility of her coming, you know, uh, into her full health yes. again. Um, so just like when Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He said, you know, in Matthew 6, our Father who is in heaven, yes. hallowed be your name, yes. holy is your name, thy kingdom come. So right there, you're inviting Jesus' way of seeing things. Yes. When we um, talk about the kingdom, what is the kingdom of God? It's his way of doing things, his way of seeing things. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On, so whatever the result may be, I welcome that. I welcome that you know the end from the beginning. Come on. So I, I welcome that you know the result. And and um, that invitation is very important yes. as we approach situations. Yes. And again, it went from one state to another. Yes. To another state. I love what you said right there, Courtney. Inviting Jesus into your situation. Notice what Jaris did. He knew the situation he was facing. And then what does Jars do? He went and looked for Jesus. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. She knew what she was dealing with for 12 plus years, or maybe even more. She was dealing with this for a long time. She And she used all, she used doctors, she used whatever the case may be, but she pressed in and found Jesus. She invited Jesus, I'm sweating already. <laughs> She invited Jesus into her situation. Raise your hand if you've ever had a situation where you did not know which way you were going to turn. You didn't, you didn't know whether you were going to go to the left or to the right. You didn't know whether you were going to cry or whatever the case may be. You were discombobulated. You know, that's the time where we need to invite Jesus. You know, a part of having a prayer life, we are inviting Jesus. We are inviting the presence of God. We are inviting who he is into the situation. Come on. Amen. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you're inviting how he sees the situation yes. and how he sees it uh uh, turning out or, or coming through. So notice that uh, Jairus, uh, he had a specific way that he saw it. Amen. Um, but as we see in the scripture, when the report changed, when yes. the report shifted, now it shifted and went from one state to another. So now uh, he's given a report that his daughter is dead. When, when she was at a state of sickness, mm -hmm. he still had some type of hope and faith. Yes. Uh, again, going back to verse 23, come lay your hands on her so that she may be healed yeah. and she would live. So he could see a way 
uh, uh, he, his hope was still uh, resonate. He could see, you know, he can see that prayer going through. He yes. can see it happening. Um, but when it changed to another state, when it went to a state of death, uh, you know, not producing, yes. no life, hopelessness, um, then you see the enemy tries to come in to yes. divert. Uh, he says, uh, let's see, in verse 36, as soon as Jesus, uh, excuse me, go back up to verse 35. Verse 35, amen. Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Yeah. So you got another report. Why keep praying about this? Yeah. Why keep believing God? Why keep worrying God about this situation? Yes. Uh, that's just nothing but the enemy trying to divert your attention yes. away to focus in on the problem and not the fact that you're walking with the answer. Yes, Jairus come on. is walking with the answer. Yes. So uh, uh, that question popping up is like, you know, don't you know who you're, you know, don't you know who uh, this ruler is walking with? He's already yes. walking with the answer. Yes. So it doesn't matter um, if the situation worsens. And that's just like with the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. You don't give in to what you see but you press into who you know. She yes. pressed in. She pressed her oh, way write in. write that down. Say that again. Uh, don't give in to what you see. Yes. So neither one gave into what they saw, the state, the report, the condition yes. of what they were believing God for. But they continued, and especially the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in to who she know. Cause she, it said she heard yes. of Jesus. So she, based off of that word, she just pressed in. Uh, to who she knew Jesus to be. Oh, that that's awesome, Courtney. But you know, when you were saying that, Courtney, one thing that one scripture that came to mind was Jeremiah thirty-three and three. Jeremiah thirty-three and three says this: "Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know." And then I love that first part: "Call to me, and I will answer." Invite me into your situation and I will show you the possibilities. Because a lot of times when you're in the middle of a storm, you can't see. All you can see is the storm. When you're in the middle of a situation, all you see is the situation. But then that's when Jesus like, call me into where you are so that I can show you through my word what's about to come to pass. Amen. I can build your faith. Call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you and show you unsearchable things you do not know. He will tell you what he is. He will tell you how he's the lily of the valley. He will tell you how he can be your oasis in the desert. He will tell you how he can be your strong tower. He will tell you all the possibilities that are afforded to you when you call on him. Come on, I want y'all to make a declaration right now. I, I, um, I decree and declare that I will call the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords into the very muck that I am in. I will call El Shaddai into the very prison that I'm in. I will call Jehovah Gabor into the very battle that I'm trying to fight. Come on. That's what we got to do. Come on. That's what it means when we are establishing a prayer life. Remember what the Holy Spirit showed us, practicing the presence of God, practicing allowing God to come in so that we don't have to do things in of ourselves. Come on. That's good. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus said, uh, he told him, do not be afraid, but only believe. So yes. respond with your belief. Respond with your, that measure of faith that's within you. Don't focus in on what you see. Yes. But focus in on who you know, who yes. you're walking with, who's Come on. within you. And greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what natural condition or what state, whatever we're believing God for, you know, uh, whether you're believing God for a loved one. And yes. At one point they were mentioning Jesus a little bit. Yeah. Then later on you see, you heard that they're, you know, belong to another or a folk, uh, accepted another religion yeah that went from one place you could see okay well, at least you know 
Jesus is coming out of their mouth. Um, but now it seemed like the con it, the condition or the state of the request got worse. Yeah, yeah. But again, you invite Christ in, invite him into the situation, and because he's there, that I mean, that's all we need. That's yes. all we need to know. That's all we need to hold on to. Hold on to the fact that we're walking with him. Yes. He's within us. The same power that rose him from the grave it lives inside of us. Yes. So we focus in on that. Yes. All Jesus said, all I need you to do is just believe. Yes. Don't be afraid. So yes. no matter what the enemy's trying to do it or, or, or uh, try to uh, paralyze you with fear, all I need you to do is believe. That's it. You can't see your way out. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she mm -hmm. exhausted all of her mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. possibilities. She spent all her money. Amen. She went to all the doctors. Yes. Her situation worsened. She knew that the only answer was to touch his hem. Yes. Uh, and the same with Jairus. Uh, the the uh, the servant was trying to get him, you know, hey, why trouble this master? Yes. You know, your daughter's dead. Uh, but he continued to walk with Jesus, and he believed the word that was coming out yes. of uh Christ or with the word he spoke. I, I love what you said, Courtney, because another scripture comes to mind when you when when you said that Psalms 46 and 6. Mm -hmm. Psalms 46 and 6 is such a powerful scripture. It says, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. He says, Be still and know that I am God. Amen. So we're not giving into what we're facing. We're pressing toward who we know. Who do you know? Who is living on the inside of you? Who is powerful? Who is mighty? Who is just? Who's the King of Kings? Who's the Lord of Lords? See, one thing that doubt will try to do, doubt will always try to cloud and cover up whom you're trying to focus on. Come on, you know, Courtney, I'm going to tell you something that sometimes when I get in prayer, you know, sometimes I deal with that. You know, even though I've known God to be a healer, even though I've known God to be a redeemer, even though I've known God to deliver me from my addictions of my past and stuff like that. There are. Why is it that we battle sometime with the notion, man, is God going to do it? And then that's why it's so important that, you know, when we're in and of this flesh, doubt will always rule and reign. But when we stay in the spirit, when we walk in the spirit, you know, we stay within the confines of focusing on who God is. I love that. I love that. Amen. 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 What, what's the, what, what else you got? Come on. Verse 37. Yeah, um, oh, that's a good one. Jesus didn't let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So not only do we need to uh, invite Jesus in, not only do we need to not give in to what we see, but mm -hmm. remember and press in towards yes. who we know. But we must be careful who we allow to come into a, agreement yes. uh, when we believe in God for our breakthrough. Yes. Um, and so you can't allow everyone to come into agreement. Yes. Uh, you know, with you, Matthew 18, 19 uh, tells us, again, I say to you, that if two of you agree on yes. earth about anything, um, they ask, it will be done for them by their father. And where two or more are gathered, he is in the midst. So you have to be careful yes. who you allow to come and 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 believe for you for this miracle. Uh, because again, this is out of human. We can't do anything. Yes. We can't see see our way out here. Yes. Uh, and as it gets darker, our faith grows stronger uh, because that's when we really have to trust and we will really have to believe. We really have to hold on. You know, sometimes we find comfort uh, in the in when we can see, okay, yes. well, God may move this way. He moved this way before. You know, he may move this way this time. Yes. But, but when you can't see nothing, yes. like, you don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to be healed. You don't know, you know, that's when you your faith 
get stronger. Yes. And we have to just hold on to who Jesus is. Yes. Who he is. Yes. Who he is. Come and, on. And remember what he's already done and break our way through yes. until we see that victory. Yes. I, lo I love what you said right there because guess what? You know, when Jairus was with Jesus and, and, and Jesus did what he did, Jesus told, you know, he, he only had certain people to come in. That's when the miracle took place. Amen. If we read, let's read further. I think we stopped at 17 or no, 37, right? Uh, let, well, let's start at 37. It says here. So we're going to continue reading Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 42. We stopped at 37. We'll just start there. Check this out. He let no one follow him except Peter, James, and John, brother of James. Verse 38. He came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw the, the turmoil and those who, welt, who wept and wailed loudly. Verse 39. When he came in, he said, why make this uproar and weep? The girl is not dead, but is sleeping. Verse 40, they laughed at him in ridicule. That's crazy to me, right? You know, and then, and, and then let's read further. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the girl and those who were with him and entered where the girl was lying. Verse 41, he took the girl by the hand and said to her, uh, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 42, immediately the girl arose and walked and she was 12 years of age and they were greatly astonished. Look at what God does right here. Come on, you know, when everybody's wailing, when everybody is, is basically, uh, they think she's dead or they know she's dead, she appears dead, but Jesus comes in and speaks opposite of the situation. What does the word of God do? When, you, when, you're, when you're going through something that, that, that is uh, contradictory of the word of God, the word of God is always gonna contradict the enemy. The word of God is always gonna speak life when the enemy's always wanting to speak death. And then notice what it says right here. The girl is sleeping. But then when those who were, who were touching and agreeing went into where the girl was, that's when Jesus spoke to the girl to rise up. I'm here to tell you, come on, the word on the inside of you wants to speak to your situation causing it to live again. Come on, the, the word that's on the inside of you wants to speak to your mind, to compel you to think on those things that are good and that are holy and everything. It, the, the word that's on, in spite, uh, on, uh, on the inside of you is ready to speak to the storm. Say, peace, be sealed, still. Come on, somebody give God praise. It's the word on the inside of you. You got something? Go ahead. Come on, I'm getting excited here. Woo, come on. Your promise has an appointed time. Yes. Your promise has an appointed time. Uh, what you be, what you're believing God for, it may look like it's at a place of death. It mm -hmm. may look like nothing's gonna come out come of it. Come on. But we want to encourage you today to know that your promise has an appointed time. Yes. Just continue to invite Him in. Yes. Invite Him in to help you to see it. Help you to 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 see that time before it actually manifests yes. in the natural. Uh, so that you can see the end result because he is the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. He is the beginning and the end. Yes. Or he knows the beginning and the end. And so you just have to believe and know that your promise has an appointed time and an appointed time of its resurrection and that there will be an arise yeah. sent out on your behalf. Yes. Your healing will arise. Your finances will arise. Yes. Whatever looks dead, whatever looks like nothing can come out of this. Yes. Whatever you believe in God for, if you believe in God to 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 um to write to raise up your marriage, yes. that's gonna come alive. Come on. You just have to continue to to speak those things that be not as, as though, though they, they were. Come on. Are. Yes. Just continue to hold on to the promise. Hold on to his promises, which are yea and amen. Yes. And know that there is an appointed time. Come on, I love that. I love that. You should. You. You know. I want you to. to 
to declare that over yourself right now. There is an appointed time in prayer. You know, when you pray, come on, you 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 cause that appointed time to come forth. Come on, that's what it means to have an established prayer life. You know, Courtney, I want to go back to what you said. I really love that point you said. Don't give into what you see, but press into who you know. And then one thing that came to mind, one thing that came to my spirit, that's when we're in the valley of decision. Come on. Are we going to decide to who are we going to decide to focus in on? Are we going to focus in on our situation? Or are we going to focus in on Jesus? The valley of decision. Right. And, you know, you know, you know, when I think of a valley of decision, I think of a, a dry place, a valley, a desert. Right. It wasn't that Jesus. He was in the desert and he had a literally a verbal uh, a, a match with 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 the devil. Come on. The devil said one thing. Jesus said another. Come on. And I'm here to tell you that was the battle of the voices. Who won that battle? Jesus did. Come on. Come on. Jesus equips us when we're in that valley of decision. Come on. It's the Holy Spirit that will remind us who's on the inside, how powerful we are through Jesus Christ. Jesus already did that thing. I love that. So I'm just speaking to you today. You know, when you're in that valley of decision, Press into who you know. When you're in prayer, press into Jesus. Press into his word. Press into his promises. Press in through declaration. Come on, press in. Press in. You know, that, that's what it means. That's what it means to pray from a point of victory. That's when, it, you know, that's when you don't have those patty cake prayers anymore. You know, you're really pressing in because you want God to do something awesome, man. Isn't that awesome? Oh, man, I love that. So, you know what? Just like that young girl rose up after Jesus spoke into the a situation. Why was Jesus able to do that? That young girl's father invited the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So right now, I decree and declare that your dreams that are in a dead state, they are arising in the name of Jesus. Right now, I decree and declare right now that things may be looking grim right now, but they are, they are, they are rising up from their dead state because you have made it a point to invite Jesus into your present situation. You have made it a point to invite your heavenly father into your present situation you have made it a point to invite the king of kings and the lord of lords into your present situation come on when you invite jesus life always follows because because little dude um don't you know don't you realize don't you understand didn't jesus uh defeat death on the cross he died on the cross, but then he rose again. Come on, we're connected to life. We're connected to health. We're connected to the presence of God. We're connected to the bridge that allows us to come to boldly before the throne of grace. Come on, we're connected to the one and only person that cheated death. Not only did he cheat death, he destroyed death. Come on, come on. So I decree and declare, it's every time you invite Jesus, Life is taking place. Life is taking place. Amen. Life is taking place. I decree and declare that every dead situation is coming alive right now in the name of Jesus. You got anything else, babe? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Amen. But y'all, I'm telling y'all, man, I hope that y'all were blessed today. Man, this, yeah, you say again? Yeah, yeah, you can pray. Yeah, go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Father yes, God, we God. just thank you, Lord God. We thank you yes, for every Jesus. listener right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we decree and declare that they will hear your voice and a yes, stranger's God. voice they will not follow. Yes, God, we Jesus. thank you, Lord God, that they're turning away the season from yes, strange God. voices, God, in the name of yes, Jesus, that they Jesus. will only that we will only stand on your word, yes, stand God. and see the salvation of yes, the Lord. God, God we speak, yes, God. God, to every individual, God, that's dealing with an illness, God, yes. that's dealing with a spirit of infirmity, God, yes, God. And we decree and declare, God, that they shall arise, that they shall, they shall take up their mat and walk in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We decree and declare, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that by your stripes they yes. were already healed. So we thank you for your healing virtue, God, flowing healing through virtue. the airwaves, Come God, on. and hitting their homes, yes. God, right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of God, Jesus. we just release right now 
protection, protection in the mighty name of in Jesus the name over of Jesus. every child yes. in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God that they're being protected, God, yes. uh, from the plans of the enemy yes. in the name of Jesus. God, we decree and declare that angels are being encamped around angels your people. God, that we're being Jesus. protected, God, thank in this season. God, we God. thank you for your light. Uh, hallelujah. Yes. Your light that reveals yes. your light that shines, God. Yes. We decree Jesus. and declare that your light will continue to shine even in the midst yes, of darkness, God. God. Even, darkness. Lord yes. God, as, as things around us grow dark, light God, we decree and declare that we will shine brighter yes, in the mighty in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. God, we Hallelujah. pray that you will continue to build up your army, build yes, up your people, build up God. Your army. Build up your sons and your build daughters, your God, and daughters. to be equipped and to be able Thank to stand us. in authority in yes, prayer Lord. And to decree a thing yes, so God. that it is established. In the name God, of Jesus. God, we thank Jesus. you for your established word in each and every individual, God. Yes, that's God. listening, God. We thank you for the promise that you have. Yes, and we God. thank you for their appointed time. We decree and declare that they shall not faint yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name we come of against Jesus. weariness, God. We for bind they do it in have the name a of due Jesus. season, God. Yes. And we decree and declare that they shall see their due season and they will not grow weary yes. in the mighty name of Jesus in because Jesus they are name. girded up with your strength yes in God. jesus mighty name we in, pray in jesus name and I thank you, Father God, for every teacher yes, that's about to go back in into the their buildings. I decree and declare Psalms 91 in, in the, the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's a yes, bloodline God. wall of protection on every window, seal, and doorpost in of that school of building. All of the school buildings in the name of Jesus. As Metro and other schools go back and do hybrid model or whatever the case may be, I thank you, Father God, that legions of angels are on thank post God. right now in the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. I thank you, Father God. We invite you, Jesus into our school buildings. We will not just stand on uh, uh, or, or we won't just lean on mere science alone in the, name, in the name of Jesus. We know that science has its place. We know that medicine has its place, but nothing supersedes the power of the one and only true and living God. So we stand on your word. We invite you, Jesus, into our classrooms. We invite you, Jesus, into our school buildings. We invite your presence in the name of Jesus so, and so that life Life is running through those hallways in the name of Jesus. Uh, the, the, our kids will have abundance of life right now in the name of Jesus. They won't walk around like spiritual zombies. I decree and declare that life is running through the hallways of the school buildings in the name of Jesus. I, did, I thank you, Father God, right now that your healing virtue is hitting every family. Spirit of infirmity, the blood of Jesus is against you in the name of Jesus. You have no operation in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you your eviction notice in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that everyone that is on this uh, Facebook Live and on the replay, not only are they hearers of the word, but they are doers of the word. They have ear Not only do they have ears, but they have ears to hear what your, your spirit is saying to your people in the name of Jesus. As we leave this place, but never from your presence, go before us, be with us. Uh, be with us this evening. I decree protection. We decree protection in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love y'all. I hope, we hope that you were blessed today. We, are, we hope that you were blessed by the word. We're going to see uh, Courtney come on more in the near future. I'm super <laughs> excited. I'm super excited just to have her. Amen. Were y'all blessed today? If y'all were blessed, please tell everybody what the Holy Spirit has shared with us, uh, all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Love y'all. God bless you. Stay lit. Stay lit. Stay lit. Peace.